QuickBooks Online 2023 Bank Fee Deposit Entered as Income for Cashed Based Business. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting three dots in the browser, incognito window typing into the search engine QuickBooks online test drive we're using the sample company to compare the accounting view the view that the bank feeds practice file is in and the business view the one the sample company is in to toggle between the two views go to the cog up top and switch the view on down below we're going to duplicate some tabs to put the financial reports in that being the balance sheet the income statement by right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it we're going to right click the tab up top and duplicating it and then we'll go back to the middle duplicated tab down to the reports on the left hand side open up one of the favorites the balance sheet note that if you're in the business view by the way you're in the business overview to get to those reports and then the reports on the left hand side that's where the location is under the business view if we tab to the right we can then go down to our reports again open up the other fave that being the profit and loss otherwise known as the income statement Close the hamburger, change that range. I'm going to go from 0201, 0122 to 123122. Run it to refresh it and tab to the middle. Same thing. Close the boogie. Scroll up and that, those ranges are a change in 010122 to 123122. Run it to refresh it. There we have it. And let's go to the first tab too and open up the bank feeds because that's what we primarily are working on they're under the banking tab when using the accounting view and banking up top if you were in the business view by the way the bank feeds are located in the bookkeeping tab on the left and then they're in the transactions up top bank transactions okay so now we we've entered information a lot for the decrease side of things now we're going to be looking at the increase side uh, of things. So you can look at the increases by sorting by amount on this side. So I could sort by amount and that'll give us the increases or you could use some filtering options as well. But I think this work method works good if you have multiple months in place. You might want to sort first by detail, right? So it's going to, it's going to sort by detail and then uh, sort by the amount. And that will give you basically the dollar amounts on top in terms of the deposits and then secondarily sorted by uh, the details. So you've got the same information kind of next to each other. So now we want to think about how can we construct the deposit side of things, which from an income statement perspective would be recording the increase to income and an increase possibly to cash generally. Uh, using the bank feeds that could be a little bit more complex and different depending on the type of industry we're in so let's take a quick look at the flow chart and recap the different kind of flows that we might have from the customer or revenue or sales side of things we're at the end of the flow we expect cash to be going up uh, although there's a couple different ways to be getting there right at the end of the day we expect cash to be going up but we might be on a cash based method we might be on an accrual method we might be completely dependent on the bank fees to record the transactions the easiest thing to do if we're trying to construct our bank feeds our financial statements directly from the bank feeds is to just rely on the bank feeds and wait till something is recorded in the bank which means it's a deposit it's an increase to the account and just simply record it at with the deposit form 
as income. So that would be great if we can do that, but we can only do that for particular types of industries. Usually it's like gig work or something like that. Because if you're getting paid by YouTube, for example, or some other platform, you can just wait till it, it clears and then you can just record the deposit through the bank feeds with a deposit form, the other side go into an income account. Note that you do lose a little bit of like more information that you usually get from a full service accounting system because the deposit form is not the natural form to use when recording revenue. QuickBooks is designed to use the sales receipt on a cash based system to record revenue and the invoice on an accrual based system to uh, record revenue. So if you don't use those two forms, you're not using the items uh, in the same way or the customers in the same way. Therefore, you have a little less detail for the sub subsidiary reports of breaking out sales by customer, for example, and sales uh, by item, the things that you sell. But that might be well worth doing if it's the easiest thing to do in like a gig work situation. Now, if you have a little bit more difficult of a situation, let's say you have a cash register in a food truck or in a restaurant or something like that, then you're usually gonna record the sales with, with the sales receipt, which is kind of recording it at the cash register. And that's still a cash based kind of system because you're getting paid at the same point in time you're doing the work, but you're usually not recording the cash receipt directly into the checking account here and the, and the actual money usually isn't going directly into the checking account at that point in time. And what will happen is you, you're going to get the money in whatever format you're going to get it, credit card, or let's just assume cash for the moment. That's the easiest thing to think about. And then you're usually at the end of the day going to want to compare the money that you've received to what's in the cash register. And then you're physically going to take that money and deposit it into the bank. And you're going to want to make sure that when you deposit it into the bank and your bookkeeping system, you do it in the same format as what is on uh, what is in the bank so that then you can use the bank feeds to double check to help you to reconcile. So in this kind of system, you're kind of forced oftentimes, in other words, not to wait till the transaction clears the bank in order to record the transaction because you want the internal controls of recording the transaction at the cash register point in time of sale and kind of double checking the sales reports to the cash as well as same thing with the credit card statements and so on. So oftentimes we'll put money in here, put it into an undeposited funds account in our accounting system, and then we'll, we'll take it out of undeposited or whatever you want to call it, a clearing account amounts to be deposited they call it something different online, but same idea. And then we'll take it out of there and put it into the checking account in such a way that we can match it to what's on the bank statement or in the bank feeds, helping us with the bank reconciliation. Still a cash based system, but it's more complex to, to do it because it's a full service cash based system instead of one in which we're completely reliant on the bank in order to construct the financial statements. And that's because of the industry that we're in. Then we could be in an industry when we're in an accrual type of system, meaning we're in the type of business where we have to do the work first and then send out a bill or invoice for the work done, like a bookkeeping firm, law firm, uh, like a landscaping or something. And so that means that this transaction has nothing to do with cash. So there's no way we can record it with the cash based system of just recording with the bank feeds. So I have to hit the invoice, which will increase accounts receivable. The other side goes to sales at this point in time. Then we're going to receive the payment and then we can record basically the deposit. So the way QuickBooks is usually designed to work is we enter an invoice, accounts receivable goes up, sales is recorded. We receive the payment. Generally, we decrease accounts receivable, record the other side into this clearing account called undeposited funds or funds to be deposited or whatever you want to call it, because we want to make sure that we group the money that we're receiving in the same format as it will be shown on the bank. So then we'll, in our accounting system, record the deposit, which might be comprised of one receive payment or multiple receive payments or multiple receive payments and credit sales. For example, if we got multiple cash flows in that were cash, 
I'm going to deposit them at one time. I want to make the deposit in my system the same format that will match on the bank's side. So when they do come through with the bank feeds, we're just going to match out to the bank feeds instead of instead of recording the transaction through the bank feeds. So and then, of course, inventory, as we talked about before, also complicates the system because if I'm tracking inventory on a perpetual inventory system, I have to use an invoice and a sales receipt to record the items of the inventory. So we'll start to look at this and we'll, we'll start at the easiest method, meaning you're in the type of industry that you can just record transactions uh, with a deposit form. And then we'll, we'll get into more complex methods and branch out from that easiest method and try to explain step-by-step step why you would need to record something a little bit different depending on the method. Now, if I go back to the income statement, notice that our income line, we only have two generic accounts at this point in time. Uh, that's gonna be sales and sales of product and income. So we have a service income account. We have a product income account. That is normally like, all you really want are the major groupings of income accounts usually mistakes that people often make which sometimes they're justifiable but generally as a general rule you don't really want to make income accounts based on your customers so meaning i'm not going to make a separate income account per customer because usually if you're doing a full service accounting system one in which you're not using deposit forms to record revenue but you have sales receipts and invoices to record revenue you will have sub ledger accounts to break out your income by customer, your income statement then can be the summary account. And the other mistake people make is to have a separate income account for every inventory or service item they provide. That's, that's overkill as well. You usually only want major groupings of the things that you provide because you can run subsidiary reports if using a full service system, meaning you're using sales receipts and invoices, not just deposits. They can, they can generate reports broken out by the things that you sell, by product and service, if you're using those service items. However, if you're not using uh, sales receipts and invoices and you're in a gig work situation and you're getting paid by YouTube or like Amazon or like an Audible thing or whatever you're doing, then you don't have the subsidiary reports because because you're not using the sales receipts and invoices as as readily and you might just start naming your income accounts like youtube income <laughs> right or amazon income or something like that which is what we'll start to do here all right because that's that's going to be the general that's where most of our information is going to uh, come from from our practice problem and then we'll branch out from there so let's just let's take a look at an example so let, let's first just look at some of the because some of these these income accounts that we have here are classic kind of things that people deal with and how we might might deal with that as they come through the bank feeds so different kinds of deposits so first of all we've got this paypal thing now paypal used to be like a an intermediary kind of of platform where you would put it uh you would use paypal just so that you can transfer the money into into your checking account so if that's all you're using paypal for then maybe you don't need to do bank feeds with paypal maybe you can just wait till you transfer the money into your checking account and you can simply record it as income from whatever source whatever the source platform was as it comes into your quickbooks now that would you can only really do that or that would be best or easiest to do if you didn't have any any other uh like like all your income was coming from the same place that's just going through paypal and you're not using paypal to pay like expenses and stuff because then you're using paypal more like a more like a checking account so that's one method that you can use uh but now paypal is becoming more and more like a checking account so if you have multiple sources of income going through paypal Another method you might use is to set up PayPal as another checking account, which it kind of is these days. And therefore you would have bank feeds up top with another card of a PayPal account. And you can then record your income and your expenses in a similar way as you would with another checking account. And you would have just the intercompany uh, or inter bank account transfers between the PayPal account and your checking account. When there's a transfer, 
and we would record it that way. So we'll talk more about PayPal later. There's different integrations with PayPal you can kind of look at, but the, that's what we'll actually set up a PayPal like checking account and use the bank fees to set up PayPal. Hopefully we'll try that in a future presentation. Now, if you get paid by something like a Google, like YouTube, again, this is like gig work kind of situation. So in that case, I'm, you might just make an account called called uh, Google Income, right? Or YouTube Income. And, and you'd be using the name of the customer in essence in that case. Uh, but that would be appropriate because I'm just recording the income directly from the platform that's given it to me and I'm not using invoices or sales receipts. So we'll do that later. If you get paid by like teaching platforms like a Skillshare or something similar thing, you're just getting paid by a platform. So you might just call it like Skillshare income. If you're using something like a Stripe, that's another intermediary kind of, of uh, transactional uh, tool similar to PayPal. But Stripe is usually designed specifically as an intermediary tool and not so much as like another bank account. So you might have different Stripe integrations that can help you pull more detail from your Stripe into your, into your business account. We might talk more about that in future presentations, but if you, if, but that can get kind of complicated because do you want all that added detail in your system or not? If you make sales on like a website, do you want to have all your customer detail information pull into QuickBooks or would it be better to summarize that information in QuickBooks and have all that other detail in Stripe or wherever you have it coming from? So one method you can use, we'll just do here is we'll just imagine all of our Stripe income is coming from like a website or something like that. You could wait till it comes into your checking account and simply record it as whatever it's coming from. You could say it's a website income or whatever. And then all the added detail that's coming through Stripe, instead of having it within QuickBooks, you can then pull that from the Stripe page and then your QuickBooks is not weighted down with all that added detail. But maybe you want all that added detail in QuickBooks, which means you might use some integrations to help pull it into Stripe, which we're not gonna get into here, but we might dive into in, in its own kind of presentation or uh, course. Then Audible is another one if you get money from Audible. Then again, you could just, that's like you're just getting paid by a platform for royalties or whatever. So then you could just record it as income as it comes, as it comes through, possibly just calling it audible income. And then, uh, and then, so Amazon, same kind of thing. If you sell stuff with Amazon, it gets a little bit more complex uh, and you might need to integrate with Amazon. So there's, there's tools that you can use that are apps that help you to kind of integrate your transactions with Amazon. But if you're just getting paid by for like, for like Amazon Prime or like video, you know, royalties or something, then then you might just call it when it comes through Amazon, <laughs> Amazon income, right? Because it's just another platform that is coming through. Amazon might have multiple different things that they pay you for which you can which you can usually see as differentiated with their with their transaction detail interest obviously uh might be just you just record that basically as uh interest income so let's imagine that i'm going to record one of these in place that are, are like the easiest thing like stripe i'm going to imagine it's coming from a website and i'm just going to record it as like website income so this would be like the easiest way to do it, right? I'm just gonna say, all right, Stripe is here. They're trying to record it as, as a transfer. Uh, I'm not gonna record it as a transfer. It's recording it as a transfer because it's coming from another, uh, another like, like what you might think of as a bank type of account if you were to try to integrate with Stripe, but I'm just gonna record it as a category. Again, you could use apps to try to integrate. QuickBooks is trying to come up with new integration apps, but sometimes that's a little bit of an overkill. So you wanna really think about before you you know, set up those integrations. Do you need them? <laughs> what, what added information, what stuff do you need in QuickBooks versus outside? Do you need to bloat the QuickBooks to have that added information or is it good enough to have that in uh, the Stripe area? So in any case, I'm going to say there is that the customer or vendor. Again, you might just call it Stripe. I'll just call it Stripe, which is not exactly correct because of course the customer, if it was coming from a website, might be that it's coming from multiple customers that that are from uh, the website. But if I'm selling like $5 items and I have thousands of sales, do I really want all the customers coming through into QuickBooks? That's you know one of the questions you wanna 
have before you do the integration. All right, and then we've got the category. So I'm gonna just set up a new account as I go because it's gonna be an income type of account and I only have you know, these generic income accounts here. And I'm gonna say, I wanna get detailed basically in my gig work in terms of which platforms are paying us. So I am gonna set up a, an, an account by in essence, who's paying us, which is a deviation from the general rule in a full service accounting system. Uh, 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 if I was using a sales receipt or an invoice. So that's gonna say this is gonna be an income account. And I'm gonna say just other primary income. And I'm just gonna call it website income with it with the imagination i'm just making this up that this stuff is coming from a website sales or something like that so that's what i'm going to put it for instead of just saying stripe income right because what's the stripe is there collecting income for a particular thing generally would be the idea and so i'm going to save it and now of course uh let's save it and close that we could make a rule for that now so let's make process i'm just going to make the rules as we go on the deposit side similar to what we did on the expense side i'm just going to call it stripe rule again and this time it's a money in rule instead of a money out rule you can have a particular account or all accounts we're going to say that it's going to be any or all I'm, it doesn't matter because i'm only going to have one condition we'll talk about multiple conditions more later i'm going to say i want it from the bank text i like that better than the memo typically and then I'm just gonna say it contains, and I just want Stripe. As long as it says Stripe, then I'm good to go with it. So I'll keep the Stripe, and then deposit uh, type, category, website, income, Stripe. And so I'm not gonna auto add it. I'm gonna wanna check them as we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So same thing we did. Now I've got these rules that are set up here. Let's go up top and I can filter now by the recognized items. So the ones that are recognized and here are the stripes. So let's just try to add like just some of the, the stripe stuff. So one way we can do that, if I just try to select these ones, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna put my cursor here and then I'm gonna scroll down to the end of the stripe stuff. So I'm gonna say right there, I'm holding shift and I'm gonna select all of them and and there they are so i'm going to keep this other stuff because i might use that for some other thing i don't think i'm going to need these ones so i'm just going to add these just to clean them out here so let's go ahead and then i'm just going to accept all of that and pull that in to to the system so then if i go into my book my balance sheet and go into my checking account we have a positive number now Woohoo! And so now we've got all these items that are recorded on the deposit side that are in the website income. If I go into any of those, it doesn't take me back to the bank feed screen, but rather to a deposit form, the form typically used for an increase to uh, the checking account. Now notice the checking account is a filterable form because there's a lot of transactions. So if I just wanna see the deposits, I could go in here and I can customize and filter the transactions by transaction type, let's say, and let's say we just want the increases, which are the deposits and run that and boom. So now we've got our Stripe deposits in there. And then the other side, if I go back was on the income statement. So in the income statement, let's run it to refresh it. It's gonna be, now we've got this website income, just a generic kind of income account that we're gonna put everything from Stripe that goes into and boom. So it pulls in all that stuff and everything that's going in there is with a deposit. Now, again, remember in a full service accounting system, anything that increases an income account is usually going to be an invoice type of form or a sales receipt type of form, accrual invoice sales cash based method. We're using a deposit. So again, that's fine because that's the method we're using, but it's not really what the system is kind of designed to do. So we're losing a little bit of added detail uh, by doing that because I can't run like a sub ledger by customer or by or by item. But I did add the customer as just Stripe income. So if I went to the tab, the first tab, for example, and I go into my ham boogie and I go down to the sales, then and then I go into my customers. Now I've got my Stripe items down below. So I could like see the detail uh, in that way, or at least I have my customer that has been added. So again, it's not, notice there's no detail in it because the deposit forms are not usually the form 
that you use to record uh, the customer information, usually it's going to be an invoice and then a receive payment form, right? So it's so you, you get to track the customers, but it's not giving you the same kind of detail that you would have if you use the full service, uh, you know, system for the for the for the cycle of the sales cycle. Spit it out. OK, if you're in the other view, the get paid and paid view, it would be in get paid and paid. That's where your customers are at. That's what I'm trying to say. So there is that. So uh, next time we'll keep on building building these and we'll do the same thing. We'll say, okay, we've done the easiest thing, just using a deposit and wait until it clears the bank. And then we'll start to grad, start to move away from that to the more difficult components, say entering a sales receipt, how do the bank feeds fit in there? There's actually two nodes it could fit in there as you could try to hit the bank feeds to connect to the sales receipt or you can use it to match the deposit. And then we'll move to the invoice where you could have three nodes that you can connect the bank feeds to. You could enter the invoice and try to connect the bank feed to the invoice. You could enter the invoice, receive the payment, try to connect the bank feed to the payment. And then you could enter the deposit and try to connect the bank feed to the deposit. So, so we'll talk about all those different possibilities just so you're kind of aware of them. But most of the time, people that are using a full service accounting system will probably do the whole system themselves, record the deposit on their end, use the bank feeds then to verify the deposit that they have made using the bank feeds as a reconciliation tool, as opposed to a recording of the financial transaction tool. All right, let's just open up a trial balance and see where we stand at this time. We're going to duplicate this. It won't let me duplicate it. I'm going to hit the ham boogie reports down below. And let's type in trial balance, trial balance, boom. And let's run it from 010122, 1231.22 and run it. This is what we've been constructing, you know, thus far, just in terms of the bare bones, mainly from data drawn directly from the, the bank feeds. Notice you've got your assets up top and then your liabilities, then your equity, and then your income statement all kind of in one place.